Yeah, I believe in giving everybody an opportunity. I, he was in the game, and a parent came up to me. Why is this kid playing? Said, Come on, man. He, he's, it's Little League. We're not in the pros. We're playing over at Holly Park. Aaron, the home run either tied the game or won the game. Aaron hit that ball out of the park. Aaron must have jumped so high. Yeah. <laughs> that might have been the only hit he got all year. <laughs> When I was 17, my brother, sister, and mother were all arguing and I just didn't want to be around it, so I would go to the park. I went there and there was this little league team practicing and they needed a replacement coach and out of the blue sky, one of the kids said, oh, he can coach us. And I looked around and didn't know who he was talking about and then I realized he was talking about me. And I did coach them that Saturday and fortunately for them, they won. And I've had the coaching bug ever since. And when I was in L.A., I didn't have as much responsibilities as I did when I came to Compton. In L.A., I was just a coach. In Compton, it seemed like I'm much more than a coach. Some of the kids' parents over the years have been locked up, murdered, or just abandoned them at birth. And many of the guys that, that I coach do have some form of affiliation, be it indirect or direct, with gangs. And I'm just trying to do the best that I can to let them realize that there are positive things that you can do as a group of young men. I had a kid last year to sign with the Texas Rangers. He impacted me quite a bit. He had a situation at the school where he kind of, you know, got pummeled, beat pretty bad by a guy that probably weigh a hundred pounds more than he weighed. I was at home and I got this call. Gee, get up here, Desmond got knocked out. Gee, get up here, Desmond gotta go to the hospital. Gee, get up here. And then when I saw his face, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that kind of affected my health a, a bit. I had to go to emergency. I found out that I was a diabetic and I didn't know. I just thought I was sleepy all the time. <laughs> but, you know, my blood sugar was so high, they wanted to keep me, but it was something I wanted to keep to myself. The way my mother was, that's the way I am. When it gets to where it's out of hand, then it's time to think and go in another direction in life. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. Give me enough money to go live in the most desolate part of Alaska, live in a log cabin, be out there like Grizzly Adams and, you know, fish, hunt, deal with the snow, deal with the elements. That's an alternative to the hustle and bustle of smog and road rage and arguing with umpires and arguing with kids. But I have so much that I want to do before I'm done, because there's so much that needs to be done. And sometimes I just, you know, go home and just cry because there are so many people that could do so much more that don't. Baseball is a very humbling sport. And, you know, it's just like, you wake up in the morning, you know, you trip in the front yard, you, somebody steals something from you, somebody do some things that you don't like, but you know that there's always tomorrow. You know, even though we can't win every game, we do go out with the intention that every game is going to be won. Just like waking up in the daytime, you know that there's going to be some bad days, but you don't wake up, you know, hoping those bad days come. You just live your life and you know, whatever happens, you learn from it. And in baseball, it's the same way.